To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of, out, of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing in them to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache? Oh, hi! Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays! Uh, you just caught me reading a little Shakespeare out loud, which I like to do. Um, welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. I don't need this anymore. Um, today, we're diving into another sentence correction tip. This is tip number two. Um, sort of the things you need to know going into sentence correction so that you can be successful um, in handling these types of questions. A fundamental thing that you need to understand in English grammar is the difference between a clause and a phrase. Um, and so what we have here is a visual chart to hopefully better understand uh, with what is a clause, the parts, of, different types of clauses, excuse me, and then what is a phrase. Um, so let's just go through the chart and try to explain what these things are. So a clause fundamentally is a noun and a verb. At the very basic form, it can be just two words, like I read, and then I could throw Shakespeare in there, and that is my object. So I read um, is my noun and my verb. And so a clause can be and is an independent clause when it is just a noun and a verb. In that case, you end up with a sentence, like I read, or I ran, or I sleep. Um, but we also have clauses that are called dependent clauses. These still contain a noun and a verb, but they have one extra word in there, usually at the beginning, almost always at the beginning, which is a subordinate conjunction. Um, uh, below the video, probably in the text, I'll put a list of some examples of subordinate conjunctions. There's a ton of them. Um, and these make the clause dependent on other information. So when you add a subordinate conjunction to a clause, you're begging more to complete um, the idea. It's not logic logically complete without an independent clause. Um, so in this case, when you have a dependent clause with a subordinate conjunction in front of it, it ends up being a modifier, which is very exciting. So it can modify other parts of the sentence. Um, we have a special case as well, a special type of subordinate conjunction. It goes by a lot of names. It's a substantive nominal or noun clause. All of this doesn't really matter. You just need to know that this type of clause functions as a noun. And that's why it can be the subject of a sentence. Um, and so you'll see an entire clause that will take the place and be the subject of the sentence. So that is clauses. Moving on to phrases. Phrases are everything else. Anything that's not a noun plus a verb is going to be a phrase. And so there's all kinds of phrases that we have. We have prepositional phrases. We have a positive phrases, participial phrases, infinitive phrases, and gerund phrases as well. Um, the interesting point, and I actually just noticed that I forgot to draw a line, is that the gerund phrase and the infinitive phrase can also function as a subject of a sentence, just like our noun uh, clause. Um, but otherwise, these other parts of the sentence, these phrases are going to be modifying and describing different parts of the sentence. So this is a very basic beginning um, to understand the different parts of a sentence. And the sentence correction questions are going to test how well you can understand the uses of these clauses and phrases. Um, so get to know them well. You don't necessarily need to know all of these terms. You just need to know what it takes to be a complete sentence what it takes to modify or describe something in the sentence, um, and then from there, it'll be much easier to deal with the sentence correction questions. All right, that is all that I have for you today. If you have any questions or want to leave any comments, give me feedback, uh, critique my Shakespeare reading, please leave comments down below. We love to hear from our students. Um, 
So be excellent to the universe, and I'll see you next week.